So this is part two of update three of uh, TEDx Summit Adventures in, in Doha. So last night we had opening night, which was the big, uh, the big TED uh, set of TED Talks at, at the Katara, which was this beautiful open air amphitheater, uh, very, very like inspired by like the old Greek uh, like theater in the round kind of amphitheaters and you sat on you know marble around this like um, uh, circular stage and it was just it was just really a, a, an awesome place just to kind of take take it all in so the the talks were were awesome um, the, the the first talk was by an Indian artist and he presented this really interesting idea of how he and his wife has, have come up with what they call their 200-year plan. And basically, it's thinking about life and the future um, and what is their 200-year plan for kind of what, what are they doing with their lives that will, that will outlive not only themselves, but anybody else that they've ever met. So 200 years, everybody that you have come in contact with um, and yourself will, will be dead. And so what is your, um, not just legacy, but what is what is the thing that will exist um, after you are gone? And the other real interesting thing is he talked about time and how he sees, you know, most people look at time and like the future and you're moving in into the future and he's he was saying how he sees time and the future is is coming towards him and how that kind of changes his his you know the things that he avoids and kind of dodges out of the way compared to like a video game where you, you have a, a character that's kind of running through and all these obstacles are coming at him and so he he sees time um as, as kind of br bringing in kind of the positive things that are coming towards you in life and avoiding um, the negative things. Uh, and I thought that was a really interesting way to kind of think about, uh, think about, you know, our sense of time. So more on that, I'm sure. Uh, the second talk was by um, a scientist from Baltimore named, named William Knoll. And he talked about, this is like one of those talks that was like, this is why you you know, kind of like why do we learn physics or why do we learn chemistry, um, and what is it good for? And um, his specialty was rare books, and so they talked about they discovered um, they discovered these these um, medieval books that were like prayer books, but then the the prayer books were basically created on recycled paper and and the recycled paper was basically like these never before discovered works from Aristotle but Archimedes uh, my wife says Archimedes not Aristotle um, so never discovered works from from Archimedes um, but the, the the monks who who created the prayer book had basically taken the the uh, the Archimedes book like erased all the um, all the original text and then like tore it up and like re like and and split it into into different um, into different sections and then wrote this this new book kind of on top of the old old um, old text that was that was erased and so he talked about using um, using particle physics and using like um, x-rays and stuff to find a way to take pictures of the text that would basically filter out the 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 new text the medieval prayer book and expose the the ancient Greek that was written um, that was written underneath and so it was just a, a really kind of a wild and they were able to do it he showed us pictures of the you know and this was like a, a lost book of, of of Archimedes that nobody had ever knew even existed, and 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 so like you know it was using this like science and 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 
and um, to to do something that is like so cool in the realm of like history and like antiquities and um, it, it was just it was just really like I don't know it, it was like you know just kind of kind of inspiring to see um, how they're doing something that is that is like you know discovering something completely new here here's a book that we know we didn't even know existed um, and now we now we basically brought it back to life this was like a destroyed book and 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 we found this this ancient treasure um, buried within this like rotting book basically um, the second or, the, or no I'm sorry but the third the third talk was um, the Iranian um, comic Maz Jabrani who is is basically um, part of the Axis of Evil tour. He's Iranian American, and is part of this comedy tour that started in the U.S. Um, in the wake of 9/11 um, and the Iraq War, um, and basically kind of is is promoting a positive side of um, Arab Americans and um, <clears throat> and um, just kind of talking about some of the you know some of the stereotypes and stuff and and. Um, and he gave a really, really just great set on, you know, he, he did some, some jokes and it was interesting because he was doing jokes, um, to Arabs in the Middle East. And, and that was really interesting to see how he kind of worked towards that audience. And, and, but really you, whether you were, you know, no matter what country you were from, you find yourself laughing along with, um, with him and, and, you know, him, the points that he was making, um, you know, kind of like connecting us all together through, um, through his stand-up comedy, um, was just brilliant, um, and I'm sure I'll be sharing, sharing that with you guys um, as well. Uh, speaker number four was a researcher at at, at Texas A&M in Qatar, who was talking about um, how they are creating a technology to do what's called solar cracking to take the natural gas that has made um, Made guitar wealthy, um, and basically split it into um, carbon and hydrogen using using uh, the sun, and so this is you know, um, and and in doing this you get um, you you get hydrogen which is a a clean a clean burning fuel, and you get carbon which is um, useful in so many um, so many industrial. Um, processes um, and you're able to basically boost the output instead of like the amount of energy that you would have gotten from just the natural gas you get like eight percent more by breaking it into carbon and 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 hydrogen and and the the energy to do this you know because it's all solar based is is completely clean so you're you're getting this this with this boost in um, in energy r rather than if you just burned the natural gas which is basically what what we do now um, so that that was a really you know interesting talk about like how this technology could like change um, change change the way that we use put use energy and uh, it'd be interesting to see kind of what happens with that um, but talk number five was a physicist um, that was part of the of the team that got Qatar the the World Cup, um, which is coming here in ten years, twenty twenty two, and so he basically, you know, is is part of the team that that worked on these um, these solar cooled stadiums, and he talked a, a little bit about how they're going to design these stadiums because they're going to be playing soccer here in July in the desert, and 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 they're going to create these stadiums that. Um, have these like um, are designed so that the it's like passive cooling systems so that you know between using shade and these different technologies um, they're gonna they're gonna create a comfortable um, outdoor environment within within these stadiums and so he kind of walked us through a little bit of that technology um, again there's really something that you, you, you haven't even thought about before um, but it's it's part of the reason that that uh, that Qatar will be hosting the World Cup. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, there was a 
Jordanian singer who sings in all different languages. She sang in Italian. She sang in. Um, she sang Whitney Houston. Uh, you know, and she she sang in, in her native Arabic, uh, and just kind of blended all these different genres together, um, and that that was really that was really uh, something to hear. Uh, one of my favorite talks was by a TEDx organizer um, who basically organized TEDx Baghdad, and so this was um, an Iraqi expatriate who who lives in Sweden um, who went to. A TEDx event in the Netherlands, and was so moved by it and so inspired by it. He's like, um, I need, I need to try to do this in, in, in my home city of Baghdad, which he he hadn't visited in years. And so, um, he basically got together and and kind of like applied for the license and and posted all this, and all these other Iraqis that have been living abroad. Um, kind of came out of the woodwork to kind of say, "Hey, this is a great idea. Um, let us help you do this." And so this this network of um, international Iraqis all um, returned to returned to Baghdad and worked with Iraqis that are working there, worked with the government, um, and they came to, and, and put this like um, this TEDx event together. Um, and it was just it was just really cool. He talked about all the obstacles, you know, all the all the negativity and how they wanted to bring something positive um, but to Baghdad and he talked about kind of his goals to reclaim um, the reputation of Baghdad um, instead of being something negative um, for the world to to make it you know this city that that it, that it once was and it was just really just I don't know I, I think you really see the power of what these TEDx programs do, um, you know, in these corners of the world where where ideas and and, and innovation are not as free as we take them for granted for um, in our parts of the world, um, and so that that was that was a really really powerful talk, um, and then the night ended with um, Hans Rosling, who is a um, Swedish statistician. He does a lot of stuff for the World Health Organization and the United Nations, um, and he gave a talk on. Um, basically, the 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 relation between the religions of the world and family size, and kind of set it up to say, okay, what do you think the 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 um, the connection is, um, and then kind of proceeded to use his website called Gapminder to show the statistics and break apart different parts of the world. Um, and he's if you've if you've never seen Hans Rosling, you need to Google his TED talk. He gives a bunch of different TED talks. Um, and they're all using like world statistics, but it's all like riveting. Like you, like you, you know, this is stuff that you know, sh you know, can be like the driest stuff that you've ever heard. And but the way that he presents it, it's like you could listen to him talk about world health statistics like all day because he makes he makes it like riveting, basically. Um, and then so that that was the that was the set of of of, of TED events last night. Um, and uh, and and then we came back and um, crashed, and now we're we're getting ready for a bunch of workshops. We're going to meet some of the some of the other TEDx organizers and start talking about the uh, the different things that we do um, in our own TEDx events. And I'll continue that um, with update number four. So, thanks.